So I would just like to say one thing about the, the panel session that was uh, taking place uh, an hour plus ago. So here we've been working with a customer uh, where a customer explained what the problem is. That's usually what we have a problem with, that we don't hear what are the problems that customers are having in the field, uh, allowing us to, to build a solution to, to, to make that verification problem easy. And that, that's what was also mentioned in the panel. And uh, yeah, so uh, uh, talking of the agenda, so uh, and uh, continuing with more or less what Eric was saying, uh, this is another verification IP uh, solving a specific problem that uh, many designs are uh, uh, having today. So what we'll be talking about is really what the floating point uh, arithmetic is, uh, what are the available solutions today, and uh, how uh, uh, a design can be really verified uh, uh, using assertion-based verification IP uh, and finally see some results and, uh, of course, the, uh, the conclusions. So, uh, looking into the fixed point arithmetic, what is the uh, floating point? So, it just uh, gives us uh, more options in terms of the, the radius of the value, so better precision and higher accuracy. But on the other side, uh, where we have to pay the value is uh, the design is more complex and uh, verifying such a, a design can be a nightmare. And down below, you just see how it's uh, uh, an example of the uh, IEEE 754, so the, the standard itself defining all this, uh, how the, the number uh, description uh, looks like. So we have different uh, precisions and uh, different areas of, uh, of the number itself. So we have the sign, the exponent, and the mantissa, which uh, put together, uh, put together uh, determine uh, and define the, a number. So. Uh, Talking of, uh, of bugs, keeping them away from uh, from our design. So, uh, what are the solutions that we are having today? So, of course, uh, everybody's trying to do some simulation. <coughs> Probably say most of the simulation uh, in, in general in terms of the verification. So, the only problem with the simulation really is the exhaustiveness. So, we got, we cannot really fully verify what is going on in, in our design. So we don't know if uh, there is a bug missed. So uh, and because uh, there are many, as I said here, uh, corner cases uh, that we may not think of. Then uh, another area of the solutions uh, is uh, trying to use the sequential equivalence checker against the reference model. So comparing the RTL and the reference model. Usually those reference models are uh, expressed in the system C or C++. But uh, going one word above, uh, so this requires understanding uh, both implementations. So for the uh, person who is implementing them, so very high effort, but uh, little usability. And let's be honest, we don't have as many solutions on the kernel checking side today that will uh, really give us an uh, uh, easy environment to, to apply uh, RTL to uh, system C design. So together, we're working with. Uh, Designing, especially uh, specifically Ravi, so uh, they approached to us saying, "Look, we tried various solutions, and uh, we had uh, problems with the convergence. Uh, a lot of uh, time uh, developing the solutions. Uh, so, what can you do to, to solve that problem?" So we sit together and uh, we created a verification ID uh, that is uh, really a new solution solving uh, this specific problem of uh, verifying the. the <coughs> <clears throat> excuse me, the, the floating point designs. And uh, a nice thing about it is, again, it's a uh, formal based and it is assertion, uh, so it comes with assertion and it's a verification ID. So it's coming in a form uh, plug and play and running. So uh, uh, talking really of uh, probably this, uh, the core slides of the better of uh, the solution itself, again, uh, this is a, a system railroad package that is uh, uh, delivered. It's uh, coming with the, with the functions that are uh, as, as named here with uh, IEEE. So these functions are uh, uh, on the front side that uh, you can use and edit uh, for the sake of your uh, verification. Uh, and uh, a nice thing is that you don't need any reference model. So you have your RTL and the verification ID uh, uh, kind of plugged together. So I'll talk about the picture itself, but uh, that's the general idea. 
uh, which allows you the, uh, to minimize the, the effort on, on, on the user side uh, to understand what is going on there and uh, really uh, even to, to know what is the design. Because usually this is something that the verification engineers are, are checking because uh, on, the, on the higher level, I would say. So the, the tool itself and the, and the solution together are coming with it. So uh, uh, we, we ship the verification IP with the tool. So uh, automatically the proof engines are solving the, the hard problems uh, that are needed to be solved. And of course, uh, the debugging environment is uh, integrated there. So uh, really uh, packaged uh, uh, nicely. So if you look here, uh, I mean, the tool is uh, the, the core of, uh, of all this. So what, they, what is uh, read from the user side? So it's reading the, the design itself and the assertion based the verification IP. So uh, the IP itself is uh, quite configurable as you have different designs, different configurations uh, that are implementing the same functions. So you can uh, define whether you are uh, doing half or single precision, different rounding mode, latencies, uh, and uh, later on I will, I will mention as well. So you may have uh, certain uh, things that are uh, defined in the standard that you haven't implemented, like the QNAN, SNAN, so I don't want to go into details, uh, I don't know uh, how much you have the background on the, on the floating point, but really uh, giving you the, the, the environment to, to set up uh, uh, the verification flow easily, uh, looking into the, the design uh, spec. So, uh, of course, uh, uh, this is, uh, uh, solution itself is the compliant with the, with the standard. That is uh, the, uh, defining all the floating point uh, specification. So uh, the list of the, the supported features is uh, all uh, precision formats as well as the rounding modes with their exception flags. Um, then uh, a timeliness uh, uh, that can be set up uh, uh, before or after. So that's one of the configurations that uh, you can have in uh, uh, done in the tool. So uh, currently supported uh, uh, operations are addition, subtraction, multiplications, and of course uh, absolute values, negations, or uh, comparisons. And uh, uh, another thing that is there, you can use conversions functions. So these are there because uh, uh, sometimes uh, you can configure the IP uh, differently to do a half and double precision, but uh, you may have the operands that are defined uh, for, the, for the single precision. So if you want to go to the half precision, we have the environment uh, actually to simply convert uh, uh, the possible values that uh, this operand can get because formal is going to generate all possible of them to really say hey I just want the operands to be within the, the half precision because my uh, output, uh, my uh, <coughs> computed value for example multiplication is uh, really the half precision. And as I, again that, that is uh, customable customizable uh, and finally uh, uh, we have the environment as well uh, uh, to the, the uh, for deviation from the standard so we can uh, we can set up uh, uh, that as well so how this really looks into the tool when you uh, and what is the, the user really sees uh, when, uh, this is uh, the, the property and the assertion itself that user edits to uh, bind to the, the packages that are delivered with the tool. Uh, basically, we have the, the triggering condition in first place. So, when is the assertion, uh, when is, I'm sorry, when is the operation starting uh, uh, for the operation itself? So, uh, uh, you give the tool the, the operands, of course, and the, the, the rounding mode. So, different rounding modes can be set up. Uh, then, uh, of course, you may have some latency. So from the uh, operands to the to the final computed output, and uh, uh, finally, uh, uh, the, what you see here, the actual value that's your actual value that is in the design itself, okay. the uh, the <coughs> computed value, and, and then uh, 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 in the you can specify in the tool uh, what are the supported flags. If you have uh, that's the deviation from the standard. Uh, or options that you, you may have, so you are just supporting certain flags out of uh, uh, available flag. And really, in, in, in red, uh, this is uh, delivered uh, with the tool, so part of the package coming with it. Uh, so the, the first uh, one on the top, so this uh, on the tool defines the type 
uh, for the expected value, that's what is, uh, at the end of the day, compare uh, your, uh, uh, your actual value is compared against the expected value. And uh, this uh, type defines uh, all, the, uh, all the flags, etc. So a computation of the expected value is uh, really uh, done uh, in, the, in the operation. Uh, this one here, and then uh, checking of the results uh, is uh, done, uh, I mean, applied here. So again, nothing that you really have to do, all is uh, uh, done uh, by the proof. So uh, here, I would just like to pass over to, to Ravi. Uh, to try to explain, I mean, to explain actually uh, what is that so, with the solution. Yeah, I think Sasa talked to you about uh, the verification IP. Uh, basically, like what Sasa was saying, you know, the reason we went into uh, one of these VAP modelers, uh, um, exactly, we initially we have like Zyling is like, you know, like a company, it's very configurable. We have a, a design like you no, know, which are uh, legacy designs. We try to we are adding all the floating point and stuff. And already we have gone much way ahead in the project. And then we didn't want to spend a lot of ROI uh, coming up with all this sequential equal checking and stuff. The whole there's no way we can uh, allow that, that amount of time to do this verification. And from the management, they want to make sure like you know, since we have moved forward, they want to find out like you no, know, is there any bugs you know, through formally we can do and then say. This, this works fine. So that's why we are looking at these options and then, like, then we went into this uh, using this VAP when uh, this company proposed this thing as. And for our design, we use uh, uh, precision, which is half and full precision. And like I said, which is very, it's very configurable. And then like you know, uh, most of our time is spent like, you know, adding this constraints. Like you know, we have this cost K, fixer point and stuff, which we already know works in the design. And then we, want, we don't want to check that in formal. Which already works in simulation and emulation and everything. Therefore, uh, our most of the time is spending in constraints, like you no know, picking the constraints, just to verify only the uh, FP blocks, FPU blocks, which is in, in our uh, DSP code. And therefore, uh, for to do that, we need to do a lot of black boxing, writing a lot of constraints, and then uh, making sure that everything is set right. And initially, a lot of this uh, uh, feedback was like, no, the constraint was not set right. We had to go back and forth to fix those issues, and uh, we found some issues in our constraints also using this uh, tool. And once we had that, like, you know, we had a, everything was up and running. And our design, like when we simplified our design, it's since it's configurable, we simplified it. It's like you not know, just combinatorial, no pipe stages. And uh, um, also, our design, since it's configurable, we kind of uh, removed like, you know, some of the denormal cases and stuff so that like, you know, uh, we want to speed up the formal convergence. And that helped, and then also our formal VAP is basically we were, we wanted to check all the valids, the exceptions, the exact uh, valid overflow, uh, underflow, and all the stuff. And uh, therefore, this uh, part of this verification IP provided all those features for us to test. And uh, from this, uh, the way when we started, it, like I said, you know, our uh, design has progressed so much. Like, you know, all the simulation was almost done, and then. Uh, the emulation was running, and then we were using the Berkeley soft load, uh, soft float model uh, for uh, running uh, with the C model, and then also using the uh, local Linux in, 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 in Intel instruction set with the DPA calls to verify our floating point model. Uh, so we found some issues in the constraints, but like not to prove the model, like what Eric was saying, you know, we did the reverse way where you know, we took all our designs which we had all the bugs, and then we we synced up the article to those uh, bugs which was found, and then this model was able to find it within minutes, which took us like you know, maybe so many man hours and stuff to get to that level of doing normal simulation and emulation. Therefore, the big advantage of using this thing is like you know, going forward, like, you know, like we are tweaking the designs, like you know, a lot of denormal cases and stuff like that. But for the designers, basically, it's just uh, very easy to run, and then like, you know, once the VAP is there, they can run it, they can do design changes, and then run it, and then if there are issues, then like, you know, they can uh, fix it right away before say, sending stuff to the verification person to run, like, you know, maybe more formal or like, more simulation and more reflection. And some of the results, like no, like I think uh, the vendor they themselves, like no, like for example, like what uh, from the previous speaker, like no, they had a open code, they were testing it, and 
this was some of the results on the open forum. I will leave them to talk about it. From the uh, from our Zilinx FPU, like you know, if you, like you said, the multiplication took like 15 days to set up. Mostly the setting of the constraints, all the configurability, and all those stuff. We have like thousands, thousands of like lot of hundreds of configurations we can set. So we have to set the right configuration constraints and stuff like that. Once we are there, then you know we were able to do a full proof, and then we only were. Uh, our operands were only like the multiplication addition and subtraction. We don't do division. So we were able to prove, and then we were able to compare with our emulation stuff. Okay. And then I think the next guy uh, he was talking about uh, the coverage. Yeah. So I, I just wanted to say one thing uh, on the on the previous slide. So the re result that you see in the upper picture that's uh, just one of the designs that we've been using as a reference design uh, to kind of uh, justify that what we did in the verification actually makes sense. So, uh, I mean, <clears throat> just wanted to, uh, to, to mention again, uh, we are using the tool that's our <laughs> technology, so that's why you see the kind of discrepancy in, 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 the, in the setup effort, because uh, Zanin's uh, 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 guys have not been uh, using the tool uh, uh, as much as, uh, of course, we are, so for us it was really easy to set up and read everything for them. It uh, also was a steep learning curve get familiar with the, with the tools and the, and the solution itself. But that's kind of uh, explaining it. So we have a separate session on the on the coverage uh, tomorrow, so our short workshop at two. Uh, I will just uh, briefly uh, mention this. So what this solution is uh, that we are having uh, can answer you. So if you have, a, for example, set of the constraints, the tool can uh, give you the answer, are the constraints uh, 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 over constraining the design or not? So the, that's something the tool can do automatically for you, and uh, uh, and this this is what you see in the HTML view that the tool is generating at the end of the day. Uh, uh, another uh, uh, results uh, that you can of course see is the code that has been verified by this set of the assertions. So everything is done uh, under the hood by the tool again, and uh, finally you can see the verification holes. So that's why uh, I was focused on the right hand side, but uh, what really uh, the, the the solution can uh, give you the uh, answers to, to questions of how much of my design has been verified and uh, what is really left to be verified, and am I over constraining the design? Because that's at the end of the day a very important aspect uh, uh, that, that the tool can uh, give you the, the results about. And uh, this is just uh, giving the the the, re the results of uh, what the designs uh, guys have seen. So uh, what you really see in this table is that uh, almost 100% of the design has been verified with a set of the assertions that uh, we have delivered. Uh, there was some, uh, I feel free to say there was some uh, work that uh, you had to add because of uh, additional assertions that you've been writing so to verify specific aspects of their design. So this was not really manually written assertion, but just uh, multiple assertion instantiated from the verification ID with different uh, configurations. So again, HTML overview of the results, so you can really scroll through the RTL in the HTML and see what is uh, what is going on. Uh, and finally, uh, I feel free to say that uh, the solution is really easy to set up. It's compliant with the standard. Uh, it's verified against the uh, uh, various different solutions that we have uh, uh, seen in the field. Uh, you're finding bugs. The Xanax engineers, uh, I, I feel free to say that they are, they are happy with the solution, they are applying it because uh, uh, it's uh, working out of the box. You just uh, need to <clears throat> have a basic knowledge of, uh, of the design because you cannot just plug and play if not saying it, what are the operands, of course. So uh, on that side, uh, the setup effort is very low and uh, uh, it can really find the uh, bugs uh, very fast with the uh, high coverage. Even if it's a verification IP, you can still use it for our coverage solution. So it's not something that you, you need to write your own assertion. So uh, that's uh, uh, another uh, uh, advantage, I, I would say. And uh, right now, because uh, uh, this solution itself was customer driven, uh, we are not uh, supporting division and square root. But uh, if you have those requirements, we're happy to talk to you. And. Um, uh, if you made a design complex with some pipeline stages, uh, it can take a little bit more time to do it because of the combination of uh, explosions. And yeah, that was uh, the pretty much it. Thank you, Riley.
questions? Thanks for that paper. Um, I read that uh, Richard Feynman had made a, a statement that you can make nanomachines by making smaller and smaller robots all the way down. That was his, how you get from the beginning some, at our scale down to the nano scale. And this one kind of reminds me, there's a point in here where we're trying to say that there's a, a master, like a perfect model of an ALU that you're going to use to verify other people's ALUs. That was in the, the assertion, that special IEEE sauce. I'm kind of curious, where does that, how does that get proven? Because you need someone, you're proving other people's ALUs, but who's proving your ALU? Well, that, that's a standard question for any verification idea, yeah, I would yeah. say, yeah. right? So yeah. that's why I, I said that during the presentation that we've been using uh, different designs that we have found uh, in, the, in the field that are proven to work or not work, and that we used uh, as a reference uh, that our verification ID is correct. And uh, another proof is really the Xanix design, <laughs> because uh, it, it's a funny story, maybe Rob, you, you can say it, because uh, uh, the Xanix manager didn't believe on the, on the runtimes. Uh, uh, they had to step back and really introduce the bugs to make sure that the uh, uh, verification ID is not just saying, yes, it is correct, but it is, that the formal engines are running under the hood. That, that's kind of probably the best answer I can give you there. And any verification IP is like that. And uh, another thing is that uh, we also have the coverage. So when you prove the assertions, you can run the coverage to see what has been verified. And then uh, another level of uh, confidentiality, I'm, I'm sorry, uh, uh, on, uh, on confirmation that uh, what you have as, as a solution is really working for you. Because you can really see whether something is verified or not. Yeah. Uh, I, I think I'd like to learn that I think that's a good question. Uh, the fourth thing that gives what we did is like, of course, we introduced bugs and then we verified it. And then also, we had all these operands, different cover properties for operands, like you know, checking infinity versus infinity, normal, denormal, and those things. And then, whether off the bat running, just like what Eric was saying, you know, with this VAP, whether we can cover all these combinations which we had in our verification plan. And then, yeah, the fourth, that, that was another. Uh, which showed us okay, the verification IP is doing something, and like to add to that, like no, one of the things like no, uh, the four, like no, just if you run like a 30 to 30 convergence, it's like it will take forever. But this was running like two minutes or three minutes and stuff because, of course, our design was small, we removed all the five stages and stuff. Uh, so, what we did is like no, in our stuff, we had to we can do the denormal configuration, we can enable it or disable it. Therefore, in our case, we disabled it because we wanted to go faster. But we enable it, that's where the like, material lifting is happening on the wrong things and all those stuff. But then it started like, you know, taking like, 25 minutes, 30 minutes and stuff like that. And it's good, it's not overnight. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I like it, I'm impressed. Uh, okay. Doing a floating point FPU is quite the challenge. Uh, but I would like to ask you about one of the components within it. Uh, one of the difficult things, or one of the difficult problems formal has to deal with is the idea of multiplying two numbers together. And proving that having multiplied two numbers together, you get the, re the result. To do a floating point multiply, you have to multiply two mantises together to get a, um, a longer result. Uh, can you share with us uh, any of the tricks, tools, or, or how did you formally prove that that multiply piece actually gave you the right answer. Yeah, it's a good one. So it's a combination of the uh, special provers that we are having and the package that is uh, coming with the solution itself. So uh, I don't want to, uh, by saying package, we are not, not, not doing any abstraction, that we are missing anything, but we kind of combine the provers and the methodology in terms of uh, what we have uh, in our R&D to, to come up with a solution to make it fast. I mean, anything else, if I say, it will be just uh, revealing the <laughs> technology that we are having under the hood. I understand. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank so. you. <laughs> yeah, I guess my question is a little related, um, not referencing specifically the Xilinx design, but I was wondering if you could comment on the complexity of the implementations of the operations that you've looked at, uh, maybe internally within one spin, if it's mm -hmm. been you know, predominantly board level operations using you know, a plus operator or a star operator, uh, or if the designs have been 
you know, more bit level, you know, booth multipliers um, and, and more sophisticated adder trees, um, implementations like that. Uh, uh, so, I mean, uh, to, to justify uh, what we really uh, are building here, we have to go to all the combinations that are really existing. So, uh, going from half to, to single precision and uh, at the end of the day, we really have to cover all of them to run it through the tool to make sure that uh, whatever we are uh, giving to the people to, to use it is, uh, uh, is not missing anything. Yeah. Uh, it seems to me that you have implemented a uh, rough model in the VIP extent, right? Well, we have the verification IP coming. Not, not, well, you can say a reference model. Any verification IP is a reference model just implemented in its own way. This is coming with a set of the assertions verified. So reference model is also system C, right? <laughs> so our reference model is the set of the assertions verifying uh, the, the MPU design. It's a set of assertions? Yes. OK, thank you. Yeah. Right, I have one. Um, there is a, a de facto standard uh, reference model for IEEE 754. It's called the Softflow library that's implemented in C. It's been around for many, many years. And I was wondering if you have a method to validate your IP against the software library. Yeah, I, I think like that's all. Like Xilinx, like no, like our verification is using the software. We, we use the software for the simulation. Simu simulation. We use the we, we use the software take the output and compare our output with that. Okay, and then also we do uh, uh, we run the DPA calls with running the. Uh, Linux based instructions on the computer we are running and the DPA calls and then the, our model is kind of thoroughly verified with that. Before that then we verified this kind of AP VAP with our existing RP. Yeah, my, that, that, that's good, but my question yes. is specifically about the question is and the form of verification yeah. IP catch this bug. Yeah. That's the question. I think your question is will the form of verification IP that we yeah. are coming with whether we have running against the social yeah. is, is the yeah. question. Yeah. Actually, we have actually a system C front end, so actually we were looking at actually doing exactly this because it's a nice reference implementation. But unfortunately, what we found out, it's full of go-to statements, and that's one of the things we don't support in our system C front end because it's considered bad coding style. Right? So, so it's still on the to-do list. So as, as soon as we have the go-to support, we we'll definitely would like to just run it and yeah, by the way, get uh, it off the list. This is one by our uh, product uh, product owner for the design verification. Thanks, Frank. All right, let's thank our speaker one more time. Thank you.